Good evening, everybody. We are talking about the goodness of God and the love of God and God being our rock, knowing that He's for us and that His Word gives us life to the point that His life manifests in our lives unto good works, unto what God has designed for us. Do you know that God has designed you to be the recipient of His good work and also for what is good in the earth? So many times you can look at your own life and you can say, what am I good for? Is there any good in me? If I look at the fruit of my life, I look at my anxieties, I look at my fears, I look at my self-centeredness or whatever you might think there is in your life. And you might look at all of that or the struggles you are going through. You might say, am I good for anything? Will I ever, will my life amount, ever amount to anything good? Let me tell you that God has made you for good. And he has said that by his ability, he will bring forth what is good in your life as you receive that goodness. You know, when you go to a doctor, you've got certain expectations from that doctor. Or if you go to, let's say, a university, you've got certain expectations from that university. You want them to equip you with knowledge and then also to help you to start to do a certain job, to be equipped for that. So yes, you will go and you will listen to what they say, but you'll have an expectation that it will form and shape your life and bring maturity and understanding to your life from where you can live. In the very same way, we should approach the gospel. When we approach the cross, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, when we approach God as our our rock and we see what God offers, what he gives, and we see what he offers and what he gives is a life that is like the life of Jesus, which is like the life of God. He offers his very own life, wherein he has such an abundance of life that he can go and live that life towards others. That is what God offers. What God says, what is dreamt for us in Ephesians chapter three, or Ephesians chapter one, from verse 3, he says that he has predestined that we would be holy without blame before him in love, which means that we would have a life shaped by his love that is then a life of love towards others, by which he makes known who he is in the world, by which God becomes visible. So you might say, but there's many things in my life that's not like that. Well, if you've come to that place, you are at a good place. Because uh, you can now come and say, Lord, look at the area of my life and I see what you have promised me and what your quality of life is. And I am now available. My members, who I am, is available for your quality of life. I know that you've come to remove what is evil, to remove what is born from death, to remove what is born from self-centeredness and so forth from the world. And you've come to give me your life by your ability. And I am now here available for your word and your life so that who you are can be formed and shaped in me. As you then go out of a prayer session like that, where you've communicated that with God, or as you listen to messages from that perspective or read the text from that perspective, you, you, you go with excitement, testing what God has already brought in your life. I've seen it in my own life. If I, if I read a verse and I pray about something and I see something beautiful and I see what God has promised me and I say, Lord, I receive that, I go out that very same day and say, well, Lord, it's almost as if we want to see this manifest. And, and I'm now expecting that this will start to manifest in me. For instance, if the Lord says that uh, perfect love casts out fear, then I'm saying, Lord, explain to me what perfect love is. Well, perfect love is that I've raised Jesus from the dead and that your life is secure in me forever. And that will empower you to a place where you will not be afraid to love on others. Then I go out and I say, Lord, thank you that you just show me someone today that I can show your love to. Uh, even if it is just in saying I'm making a daily devotional every day and I'm devoting my time and my study and my energy towards doing that as good as possible to encourage people as good as possible to do that. Or if I, um, if somebody comes and asks for food at our gate where we just bless him as much as what we can, whatever it is, we are just at that place saying I'm not, I am now expecting from God not to be fearful in loving because I've got this knowledge and understanding that my life is secure in him forever. You know, I just want to say this, and I mentioned this in our Sunday message as well. We need to understand that when we know God loves us perfectly, that we will lack nothing, that is the place where, from where we start to love.
So I want to say this to you, uh, summarizing just the first five minutes of this uh, devotional. You are valuable to God and your life is good. You are good. When God made you, he said, this is good. Good for what? Good to love. So God will love you and he loves you unto a place where what you behold, the love you behold is then shaped and formed in you, where he can be called father. Father means the one that gives forth life. And what life can God give forth but the life that he has demonstrated towards you? Now, let us go into Psalm uh, 28 verse 1 and we read and we recap quickly on what we said yesterday. It says, unto you I cry, O Lord, my rock. Be not silent to me, lest, if you be silent to me, I become like one who goes down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplication when I cry unto you, when I lift up my hands towards the holy oracle. We've explained this yesterday in depth. He says, draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace, um, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Then listen to what he says here. He says, give them, this is now the enemy, give them according to their deeds and according to their wickedness and their endeavors. Give them after the works of their own hands. Render to them their reward because they are not regarding the works of you, Lord, nor uh, nor is the operation of their hands towards you. You will destroy them and never build them up. So we find something here that is contrary to what is prayed in the New Testament. In the New Testament, it says, pray for your enemy. Uh, Because I tell you, if God saves your enemy, your life changes quickly. Uh, And the idea is that we know that Jesus is the Messiah of all people. So we find a kind of what we would think of a Jewish nationalist or Israel nationalist prayer here where it is all about a certain nation which we can find many times in christian prayer as well oh god just save our nation and save us from this people and that people and let these people be wiped away and so forth uh, but that is prayed in a prayer where the fullness of what christ has done has not been in the mind of david we find that god comes in jesus christ and he teaches us a little bit different way of prayer in matthew chapter 5 from verse 43 onwards he says pray for your enemy uh, pray for those who despitefully use you because god makes light shine on the good and the evil and he wants all people to be saved so what we are saying now is and should we apply that to our own life we can say god this may be evil in my life but i thank you lord that you redeem me from the evil things in my life but if that would be people i thank you lord that even those people might receive life from you i want to testify my wife and i uh you know we've been struggling with certain things as pertaining to a mission station that we have in Zambia. But in this time, when we were going through this, there were some people that were making life very, very difficult for us. But we found ourselves, you know, in the beginning when this happened, you can think, oh man, I don't know why this person is doing this. Oh Lord, deliver me from the situation and so forth. Uh, And then I've come to the realization of the text, and I've come to this realization long ago, and this is how we pray. When we find those things happen to us, which is bad and which is negative, and which we might even find is demonic and so forth, we pray for the person through whom this happens, and we pray for his well-being, we pray for an enlightened mind, we pray for salvation for him, deliverance for him, and so forth. And what now happens is, when we see that life comes from God, and with or without this person changing, doesn't matter, life comes from God towards us, and we then pray for him, what happens immediately, especially if we pray from the depths of the revelation of the gospel, for that person, we immediately experience the life of God flowing through us. We immediately experience what what the spirit of the Christ in us, because we're saying, well, we find a little bit of Jesus now living in us. Jesus prayed for his enemies. And you know what? Stephen, when he was only praying for his praise for his enemies. And this these people want to destroy our lives and we are praying for them. What is taking place? Your mind immediately tells you the gospel is working. And it is working because you're praying from that perspective. And although David prayed for the destruction of his enemies here, 
we now in the New Testament see that we are, we can pray for the destruction of destruction, but salvation of the people. And that's where we then experience life, the life of God flowing in us, even in that difficult time. And that's how we are filled with the Spirit, speaking to ourselves through the Psalms, speaking to ourselves through what God freely gives us in Jesus. And what he freely gives us as an, is an empowerment unto his quality of life. Amen.